right. Hello, and welcome to an all-new episode of the Black Empowerment 365 show. I am one of your hosts, Kente, all the way live from Los Angeles, California. And I'm here with the wonderful, the beautiful, the talented host of mine, Kiana Rodriguez. How are you doing, Kiana? I am wonderful. I'm wonderful. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing really good. It's been a beautiful day in mm -hmm. Los Angeles. And I'm just happy to be here on a Friday on a new platform, Fire Talk, to chop it up with our guest tonight. Yes, it is new. Happy to be here, man. <laughs> yes. In just a moment, we will be talking with Damian D. Smith. But uh, before, before I do that, uh, Kiana, I think since we're on a new platform, I think it'd be a good time for you to give the, the, uh, the listeners a, a little info about yourself and happy work week and all that good stuff. Really? Is that what you think? Okay. Well, um, <laughs> okay. Well, um, happy work week is all about helping build strong, more efficient and positive work environments. I hope individuals that are dealing with those toxic work environments that are tired of going to work on Mondays, they have headaches, they're tired of traffic, those type of individuals that had enough. And I help them find balance and happiness each day of the week. So that is really what Happy Work Week is all about. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> and, uh, I'm so glad that you're here and happy. And um, yeah. make my work week a lot more happier uh, chopping it up with you. So. Thank you, Kente. Kente. And I am I'm Kente. very excited about our guest tonight, though. Yes, yes, yes. I am as well. I'm Kente from Indie Radio. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think that uh, this half of the Black Empowerment 365 shows are going to be really special. We have some really good things coming up, and I think that uh, I think our audience will be very happy about that. So uh, mm -hmm. I'm not going to say too much. But, uh, I, I think. Yeah, that, uh, tell, tell us, tell us, tell us. Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, in due time. But let's get to our guest. He's a f actor. He's a filmmaker. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting this brother at the Pan African Film Festival earlier this year. That was this year, right? Yeah, the, this year. Yeah, um, sure. I'm, I don't know what what day it is sometimes. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, I'm so glad that you are here, uh, Damian Smith. How you doing? I'm doing well, my brother. I'm doing well, man. Thank you for having me. And um, I, I, we were fortunate to have him on another show of mine called the Spotlight Hollywood Edition. And uh, we had a good time there. And uh, I'm so glad that um, we're, gonna, we're able to have you back to talk a little more uh, in depth about some of the projects that you kind of teased uh, in that interview. Um, before we get started, uh, give a little background for those who may not have heard that interview about yourself, where you come from and all of that. Oh, uh, sure. No problem. No problem. Uh, uh, sure. No, no problem. No problem. Um, we got some reverb. Got some reverb. Uh, 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 background about myself. myself. Well, I was uh, born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, and then um, you know, born and raised in St. Louis, Missouri, like I said, and then I moved to New York City, uh, Harlem. So I'm uh, right, basically, really, right after high school, I went straight to Harlem. Um, I did, and then. Um, that's when I just indoctrinated myself in the arts. I was always I was doing things in St. Louis to a degree, but not to the degree I was until I moved to Harlem. When I got to Harlem is when I uh, discovered my passion and grew and got stronger in my art and artistry and my you know and I went from there, man. You know, just St. Louis, Harlem. Then from Harlem, I moved to Los Angeles, L.A. And uh, that's you know that's what's happening right now. Oh man! Wow, I see. Shout out to uh, K Boogie, Adrienne, Keisha. Oh man! Oh wow! Look at these people joined in. <laughs> Thank you, my people. I appreciate you guys. <laughs> oh man, that's dope. <laughs> but yeah, man, that's a. I'm an artist. I'm an actor. I'm an actor, writer, uh, director. I just I hate giving that whole acronym: actor, writer, director, producer, and things like that. Because I've done those things. Uh, like I'm, you know, coming from like even producing the. Uh, Mixtape Awards at the, uh, at the Symphony Spaces in New York and producing uh, the Mixtape Awards at the Apollo and then from Urban World, producing that for a while and things like that. So I've done things that's all surrounded in the arts and then, but mostly 
everything that I've done, every professional I jo job, like job I've had, ad I've had as an adult, uh, has been something that's targeting, um, you know, uh, that's you know, people of color or a person or someone that's you know feel like they have been underrepresented. So that's mostly what I've done in my professional life. Mm -hmm. You know, coming now, up, so yes, now, you know. Uh, Sometimes though, you do have to wear a lot of hats. You got to wear uh -huh. the director hat, the, the actor hat, especially if you factor in as, uh -huh. an, as an actor, they're not always the best material for African-Americans. Um, yeah. There's not the best material for women as well and other nationalities, but especially sure. us. So sure. it forces you to be like this, uh, this uh, utility in the industry, you know, where you can, you better pick up some writing skills. You better pick up some directing skills if you want to have good, good work. Uh, yeah. You know, be in stuff, right? There's nothing mm -hmm. wrong with that, you know. But, mm -hmm. uh, but if you could focus in on one thing, I know you're many things. Uh, would it be the acting? Would it be the filmmaking? Mm -hmm. If you could focus yeah, on one yeah. of those, um, acting, uh, and I think acting and filmmaking go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. if, uh, if if it's you know just this I will be acting and you know, acting filmmaking it kind of go hand in hand you can have one without the other um, that would be it because uh, that's my true passion that's my first passion that's what that's where everything else spawns from that everything else spawns from my art and things like that. So, I mean, when it comes down to it, we, I know, like you said, that we all have to be somewhat of a jack of all trades, especially people of color. Um, or you know what? You know, people of color is 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 an exact term, which is true. But I like to say, a uh, people who are not as connected as some people are, so that can be used for whatever situation is. And then I, but the thing is, is you know, it all we're, we're all artists. You know, we're artists. And you use your art to get to get across what you can is the best way as possible. I mean, you see it through everything. And like someone who's not a who's not a writer director who's just this, or someone who's just this, end up you know um, creating something that's beautiful that's out of what you think this person is. So that's how I look at it. An artist, a true artist, or can do whatever medium that's applied because they're going to add their creative you know, thought process to whatever they put their mind to. So I think that's that's one of those things that I try to live my life through, just being an artist. Yes, I am an actor. That's the discipline that I choose to go into, but I'm an artist overall. That's the umbrella and everything else falls up under. Mm. Now, unfortunately, um, in this in the industry, uh, when you are an actor and you start doing parts, uh, people get typecast. Um, have you felt like you've been typecast or have you been able to do a lot of different kind of parts? You know what? Um, I've always tried to position myself as a character actor because that's what I love. I love just building characters and having fun within that situation. Um, but yeah, yeah. I mean, every person... Uh oh, we're having a little technical difficulty here. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to uh, wait just a moment as uh actually uh, come back in. So, uh, <clears throat> so we're going to just wait a moment as our guest, Damien D. Smith, comes back. You know, you got to love live radio. <laughs> Let me see if I can drag him back myself all right so uh you are listening to the black environment 365 show we are here with director filmmaker damon d smith and he is now back and you were saying about uh yeah yeah you know, I, I, that's what i enjoy and i enjoy being a character i enjoy this because that's i believe character actors have all the fun you know leading the leads are the leads um if you get it like some character actors becomes you like jeffrey wright becomes became a lead like don chudo became a lead of type of things i don't know what they what their intentions were i don't know the brothers personally but i know like you've done great like paul giamatti there we go he's a great character actor or that became the lead of like sideways and things like that. i love character actors have the most fun i believe like you can get in you can have you can 
stretch a character, become the character, and do whatever you want to do without have to, you know without having to um, you know um, restrain yourself by these social these social um, you know these social uh, thoughts that this leading actor is supposed to be this this guy straight guy this straight person that does these A B C things the character actors to spin off do all type of crazy stuff so that's what I enjoy you know so that's what that, that's mm -hmm. my thing. I, I would I would love to go back uh -huh. to Harlem and really learn a little bit more about um, how you really discovered your passion. You know what? That's a I mean that's a, a really great question. Um, how I discovered my passion is that I was in St. Louis and I knew I mean I mean I knew I was an actor before I even knew I was an actor. Like I was exhibiting actor qualities and actors personalities personality traits and things like that. I just was always just a weird dude, the weird, the weird kid, you know? So that's what happened. I was always just a weird kid. So, um, and, and I was, and they, my nickname was TV guy in some circles and certain people like, you know, back in the day, because I used to watch TV all the time. Uh, I used to watch TV. I, I loved movies. I loved those type of things. And uh, I was, you know, I always knew it was my passion, but at certain times, and this is a real thing for young black men, um, I didn't have the confidence mm -hmm. in myself to pursue my passions. I didn't have the confidence of society, mm -hmm. my, my local community, because there was no one from my community that was doing that. Everyone in my community was doing something different. And people who were a little different was viewed upon as something negative. Um, so, you know, you try to fit into that mode that you want to just be along with the crew. But I never kind of did because I was always kind of weird. Uh, but I just didn't know at the time exactly what my weird, my weirdo traits, would, you know, um, you know, what would, where they will flourish at. And it was acting. Um, and that's where I, I started getting the confidence when I decided, uh, when I decided for myself that, yeah, I'm going, I'm just going to live my life the way I wanted to. It was a traumatic event that happened that I was like, you know what, I'm just going to go without any, whatever someone think, I'm just going to do me because life can be over in a, at a second. So that's what just happened. I just said, you know what, from this point forward, I'm not even going to like hesitantly do it. I'm going to put together a plan, a course of action to get me out of the circumstances that I'm in and get to where I want to be. I was born and I was raised in the north side of St. Louis, which is a very harsh uh, place and a very violent place. But I was surrounded by love because my family was, we were a very loving family and a very, uh, my friends and family were really loving and we were there for each other and supported each other. Sometimes you can support somebody and be there for someone but just don't understand. And I feel like some of my, uh, some people just didn't understand me or just couldn't get me because I was a little different from them. And I just, at a certain point I just said, forget trying to fit in, I'm just gonna be me. And that was the best decision of my life. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, earlier- I hope that answered your, chest, your question. Did it answer your question? I'm sorry. Yes, that that did. That did. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yeah, uh, early in the year, as I said um, in the beginning part of this interview, I had an opportunity to meet you uh, for the first time at the uh, Pan African Film Festival, and uh, during that time, it was still going on. So now that that uh, some time has uh, gone on since then, uh, what was that experience like for you, and especially, and, and how was the reception of of your film? Uh, you know what? About that was received very, very, yes, very well. Me, huh? Together we me. Hold my hand and don't look back. Together we can pass this test. And in time, yeah. About that. I mean, that's what I, um, one thing about about that, it was, it was, it kind of, um, it was, it addressed a taboo subject. It was mental health in our, in, in our communities. And then it was also, it, it addressed, it was a love story and it had somewhat of a unconventional way of telling the story. You know, I think that was the best way I can, I can put it. And, um, and 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 you know, I it was received very well. I was 
I, I, I was very happy and entertained and amused on how people received that film because some people didn't know when to laugh. Some people know if they was okay to laugh. Then people, then serious situations it got really heavy. Uh, it was really, it was, it was, it was received very, very, very well, which I was really happy about. So, and so Pan African was a great experience. And then we went to Chicago, New York, um, uh, Sa um, San Francisco. We won in San Francisco. And then now just off that, I, um, We've had filmmakers. I mean, we have, we have we've had film festivals reach out to us to you know ask if we can exhibit our exhibit about that in different film festivals and things like that. So it's now I'm kind of people coming to me now as, as opposed to me submitting to these festivals and trying to get you know my film in these festivals. I'm getting people coming to me now because it had a nice amount of press. We had a real we had a really good amount of press and also. Um, the subject matter, the subject matter, and and how we did it is is really start. It, it related with people, and people connected with it, and um, it went from there. So I'm really happy about it. It actually, we're in the uh, it hasn't come up yet. We're in the Toronto Black Film Festival. We're in a film festival, the North Carolina um, as a film festival, and these are these are film festivals that we haven't we haven't even promoted or put out yet. It's three different film festivals that we're in now. That's in September, November, and December, and that's. And that's the life and the legs that uh, about that has picked up on its own and just start walking and flying, which is amazing to me. And I'm really happy about it. I'm very proud and humbled by it because it's something that I did not expect at all. So I'm, I'm very happy about it, about what about that has done for me and done for and the art that it's put out in the, in the issues that is addressed. So, yeah. You know, um, for those who are listening and maybe are not aware of the film yet, and they're wondering, why is he talking kind of in circles, not really saying what the movie is yeah. about, is because it will, you have to see the film, it will ruin it for you. So that's why it's kind of hard to talk about, because you got to see the movie, and then, yeah. you know, you don't want to tell too much, because it'll ruin the movie. Uh -huh. So. I don't know. Is it is it uh, available to uh, for people to see at all? Is it? Um... Oh yes! Oh yes! 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 Let me get on. Let me get. Let me switch. Let me switch for a quick second. Hey guys, about that is available on iTunes. Again, you can go to iTunes and put in about that dot 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 eclipses, um, and you can purchase it for two ninety nine. It's an exquisite film. It talks about love, mental health, and what happens when love is only good for you. See that you hear my voice to change and everything. That's my pitch voice. I'm trying to get, <laughs> I'm trying to get people to go buy that movie, man. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I mean, I can the trailer and the iTunes link I can send to you, brother, so you can put up for the people. Or it's it's out there in the world. And, but about that is out there again. Like you just said, uh, I can't speak about it in its entirety. But what it is is a love story, and and, and it asks the question: What happens when love is only good for you? And I think that kind of pretty much. Um, you know, I hope I hope that entices people enough to uh, watch it and go in there, go in for it. Yes, yeah, it, it's it's very good. What one day we'll be support, able to talk support, about support, it uh, openly. Businesses. Let me yes. tell you something. Mm -hmm. Openly, exactly. Let me tell you about. Can I, can I say a little something about movies? Mm -hmm. Just so you guys know. I mean, I know since the people who are listening there are not in the film industry and things like that. Every movie that is made, short or feature, is basically a small business opening and closing, you know, or opening and seeing with legs. So you have to get incorporated, or basically, or you have to own the film. You have to put it out. It's, it's a small business. So, you know, if you can, if you would like, support small businesses. That's basically what it is because every film, especially every independent film, is a small business within itself. Mm -hmm. and, and there's a there's a CEO, CFO, CEO. There's people who are putting their blood, sweat, and tears and putting all their resources, money, time, et cetera, into these films to make it to have a to have a really articulate and unique point of view to put out to the public for them to see and Hopefully, it resonates with uh, the public, and and, and and it sheds some type of light in your life, either entertainment, something to think about, something to debate about. It, it furthers, you know, society. Every, you know, so hopefully, you guys, everyone is listening. That, hey, you know, this is what this this is supporting the arts. You know, supporting small businesses, supporting things like that. It's all tied into one because, every, again, like I said, every film 
that starts and opens is a small business someone's building from the ground up and hopefully it picks up and takes off. So, you know, support if you guys can. It's two ninety nine on iTunes. You can go to iTunes wherever wherever you are in the world and buy about that. And I guarantee you, you will not be um, dissatisfied. You will be happy. You will be you will be refreshed and, and engaged and enjoy and, and you will really enjoy your purchase if you buy about that on. And, and remember, iTunes. just one day, do not buy. Uh, don't buy something at Starbucks. You know, just go one day without coffee and get about that. And you won't actually you won't even need the coffee. Yeah. You won't even need the coffee. It'll be your 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 caffeine for the day. So uh, that may get it. but I, I'll say this yeah. though, and I did Thank say you. this in our previous interview. One thing that we can talk about about the film that I think was right. really good is it showed it it fil- it was filmed very well and it showed black people looking very good. You. you know, they look good, they were shot very well, they mm-hmm. were they were um you know, it was it was like a, it was a very good depiction, and I like you know I mean, it had a good vibe to it, and it was you know it, it was very very well done. I I was so happy uh, when I when I saw him, and I oh, and I've wow. I've seen it three times now, um, and uh, enjoy it. You enjoy it more. Oh, wow. more. Um, uh, it's like kind of like uh, the Usual Suspects, where you got to watch it over and over and yeah. over. You know. Let's, let's see little things here. Um, so uh, yeah, you see, like, oh, I should have. If I was paying attention to that, I would have picked up on that and then kind of, you know, that it, that's one of the things. And that's what I've, and that was a challenge for myself within that. I wanted to try to <laughs> present one of those. I'm so serious. You know, I, I you, you, you learn and you steal from the masters, man. I got to give it to like a usual suspects is really great in which how you know, and 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 was and, and to your point, can say this is exactly you know one of the aspects of when I went to when I was when we were writing and. When I was writing and we was making this happen and we was putting it together, I wanted to have one of those type of things if I could. I was only I was only attempting to do it. You know, that's that's what I do. I you know, I I put it out there and hopefully it's received the way I want it to receive. And you saying that, man, I really appreciate that because that's one of the goals that I was striving for, man. And I, I really, really appreciate that. Thank you, brother. Yes. All right. So today we are here for a special reason. Um Hello. recently. Uh, I guess it was about, it's been about a week now. Uh, you put out yeah. a, a short film, and it's called "The Humanity in Us." Now, for those yes. who haven't had an opportunity to see it, please tell us about it. Okay, um, hashtag the humanity in us is a, a project mm-hmm. that um, I was inspired to do. Um, uh, I hate even that. you know how you you know how some stuff you just shouldn't have to have a conversation about. This shouldn't, right. we shouldn't be talking about you going to school. You should know you have to go to school type of thing. It's just what is the passage of life and the right to life. That's kind of like the same mentality as how I feel about hashtag the humanity in us. Um, I did this project because I was inspired to do it because I feel that some of these police murders and law, enforce, law enforcement murders is because they don't see uh, the humanity in us. They don't see us as human beings. Um, that brother Philando Castillo, like what happened to him is a tragedy to humanity all around the world, in my opinion. Because what happened, mm-hmm. if you look at the situation, you can hear, first off, you can, off, the, off the back, we hear that this, that officer that murdered that man was terrified. You heard him screaming, you heard him, he was terrified. So what that tells me is that he didn't see that brother as a human being. What he did, what he saw him was as a super predator, a super masculine menu that, you know, uh, that was there for complete destruction or whatever it is in his mindset that he saw that person as a devalued, a devalued entity in this world and that he can put those shots in him with, you know, without any regard. Because here's the thing, any one of those, what, four shots he shot that man with, four to five shots, any one of them could have passed through him went through that seat and struck that child in the back seat. There's no way that, mm-hmm. and, and his, his fiance, girlfriend, whatever was on the rock, was right next to him. So there's no way that you could have seen that man as a human being with a child and his, 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 his uh, lady next to him. So you had to see him as this super predator, a super thug, super masculine menial, 
or something along those manners. That's the only way. That's the only way that you could have seen this guy. That's all. That's all. That's all you can see. So that was a problem with that situation. Um, I feel that that's why I. Um, that's why that's, that inspired me to put to 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 put together something that spoke to the humanity in us. I needed them to see that we are human beings as well, which we shouldn't have to have this conversation. True, mm -hmm. and we shouldn't we shouldn't have to say, "Hey, look, we're human beings." We go to we wake up, we go to preschool, kindergarten, grade school, high school, college, and go off into our professions. We shouldn't have to say that. That's just what it is. But this is what we have to deal with. And that is, and it's really sad. So instead of just, I just, I try to address an issue as much as I can, uh, as much as possible. So that's what I, that's what I did within doing that because it was, it's a tragedy. You didn't see that man, and and, and also, that's why language is important. When Bill Clinton enacted that, that policy that he did and called these people, uh, called human beings, these are super predators. Him saying those words is what got Philando Castillo killed. You see, it's mm -hmm. the narrative. It's the narrative that they're, that they, that they're, that's created, that people live in, and then that's what happens. You see, things like this is what happened. That's why I, uh, so hashtag humanity us came from that aspect. I was, um, I was, after all these murders, right after one another, I was, it was impacting uh, me greatly. I was, it was just, and like, it's like, this is amazing. Just think, just look what happened. This man, the best case scenario for that child is therapy for the next 10 years of this person of that child's life. His fiance is therapy. It's, I mean, that's this is best case. It's, a, it's therapy. Like, this person have to go to talk to someone a professional to help deal with this post traumatic stress, the PTSD that they got to deal with from that. These type of things, it was it's, that's a best case scenario. That's horrible. So that's what I'm that's what I'm speaking about and coming about. So that inspired me to speak about this whole situation. You know? Well, um I I, I love it. Um I guess the, when when I was listening to you speak, it, it made me think about just the transition uh, from slavery yeah. through, you know, it, you know, the whole era, then we get to civil rights uh, and then you know, we're, we're moving towards it. And, you know, it's like this blank spot, you know, because between slavery to civil rights, there's like this blank spot. And from civil rights to now, there was like this blank spot. There were progressions and different laws. But, you know, what do you feel needs to happen in this moment for us to really not only come together, but move forward? Um, you know what? Moving forward, I think this, uh, the, uh, every part, every part of, a, of us need to be doing something. That's all. And I, so I can't speak. I mean, I'm only speaking about everyone should be doing something. But what I can speak upon is the artist, because um, that's, that's the world that I live in. I live in the, in, in the, in the artist world. And I believe that um, if you're an artist of any caliber, I mean, we all can talk about and joke about and do things and, and, and do art that's, that speaks about, um, you know, just fun and, the, and, the, and, the, and the, you know, the dancing and the partying and the cool and the good times and movies about getting, getting, getting high off weed and movies about getting drunk and, uh, you know, a, a one crazy night, things type of thing, which, is, which has their place and which I enjoy it myself. But if you're an artist, you definitely should be talking about the social injustice and in, in, in inadequate, in inadequate uh, systems um, of, of oppression to people of color or people who are repressed of lower uh, financial economical systems all over the, at, 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 at all points. You should be speaking about something that's addressing your community or your other world around you as an artist. And, and that's, just, that's just how I feel, personally feel about anyone who is an artist. You should be speaking out or speaking up or saying something or using your art in a way that's benefiting society always. You know, also too, I think what people forget is those are the ones that are remembered are yeah. the ones that spoke up. You know, right. uh, not to say we don't remember the ones that didn't, but real talk, the ones that are remembered are the ones that speak up. And I, mm -hmm. I, I often, I've talked about this recently. Um, uh, if you, if you do you remember that photo that was taken of, of, um, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and and Muhammad Ali and and uh, Jim Brown and you know oh, when they when they had that conference 
they had the conference, right? Yes, 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 yes. Uh-huh. Remember, remember, OJ Simpson didn't want no parts of it, right? Uh huh. Remember, he didn't want no parts yeah. of it. Isn't it yeah, ironic right. and funny how all of those people are considered, you know, like legends? legends. Like, they, when they die, yeah. Yeah. you know, like you saw how uh, Muhammad Ali, when he died, he was treated like a king, yeah. right? And it's so yeah, funny. What you supposed to didn't show up, OJ. Look where he at. <laughs> you know, so it, you know, it, you know. Yeah, that is that is funny. It would. Yeah. It is funny. It was also interesting to me is when Jim Brown said that if he had to make that call again, that he wouldn't call Kobe Bryant. I was like, wow, that was that was that was impactful to me as well when he said that. And then also, I was watching. Um, I was watching, which made me so proud of his brother. Uh, I was watching LeBron James on Trevor The Daily Show. And he spoke mm-hmm. about all the things that he was doing um, outside of basketball to progress mm-hmm. his community and the people that uh, it's affecting his community and the people around him and also the world. And which is so ins- was so inspire- inspiring and such a and such a just a refreshing, you know, look at our athletes. Like here's an athlete who's actually doing it. He's actually stepping out and speaking um, speaking out about things that is that are that are horrible and that is happening to us and that's that are, and not just people like you know not not just a a um a, a race situation or eth- ethnicity he's speaking about human beings man human beings we need to go to school like you know we need to go to school we need to do this we need to do that and he's supporting and helping fund that for everyone which was excellent but also in his com- in his community what directly affected him from from situations to him growing up and having to go through this he's like when he said when I used to go when I used to walk to school, I, I had problems getting to camp, getting to cl- getting to like my basketball things. I, I was a single parent doing this whole thing. So my mother had issues. Let me help and try to step in and provide something for transportation. That's something as simple as that. I mean, how many how many times we spend we spend money on dumb stuff? Like I spend money on dumb stuff all the time. You know, we all do, but you gotta also, you know, we also have to spend money on something to help and advance. Uh, society. That's what you know. That's what the world is should be based on. I mean, I don't understand someone not doing that as well. I mean, you can do. I'm not saying cut out any of your. You know, get yeah, get your bottles of champagne, crystal, or whatever it is you drink. It's fine. I ain't knocking it. I might take a sip with you, but uh, <laughs> but you should also be providing you know lunch to underprivileged kids as well, mm-hmm. or you know that thing. Now, now going back to the humanity uh, within us, uh, or in us, I'm sorry. Um, talk about talk about um, the participants. What you asked of them, what they gave to you, and was there anything surprising? I know that's a lot. I just asked you, but you know. no problem. I can I, I, I can handle it, my brother. Thank you, uh, man. With the hashtag the hashtag the humanity in us, uh, which you can. And just for the people listening, you can go to YouTube and put in hashtag the humanity in us and it's going to come up and you can view this video. I am also you know Kente had put it up on his site and everything as well. So just just so you know. But I um, mean, what surprised me uh, was the support that I got from everyone that I pretty much went to, you know, when it went to and tried to get that person to participate or be a part of it or something like that, man, is from a. Uh, Thomas Q. Jones to Milana Jamey to Adrian to um, a good brother. Like, even if you're not in front of the camera, you're going to provide uh, some assistance to something like that, even behind the camera. Uh, brothers like Ish- Ishmael, Stephen Miner. Uh, actually, Stephen Miner is one of the guys who's 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 over the um, who, who runs the Pan African. He's one of those one of the guys. He, he have provided some um, color correction, uh, and, and you know, and everybody who was a part of it, man. These guys came. And only thing I asked everyone to do was to just say, if I should die by the hands of the police and say whatever you want to say after that. And you know, whatever whatever that inspires you to say. I told them, I, I, just like I explained to you guys about the Orlando Castillo and all the other thing about the humanity element. And then I went in to say, so all you have to say is if I should die by the hands of the police and then anything you want to say after that is up, is up to you. And, um, and you know, people get so many illustrious stories that came out from that. And I saw that there was a lot of pain, there was a lot of hurt, there was some even funny aspects because that's what life. So people, everything, everything is not just sad. You know, it can be a sad situation, but there's humor in 
it's humor and everything. And I said, people said some things that was funny. That was, that was, jo- it, it was just, it was amazing. And I had like, and I had like Kalila Joy, Mike Payne, some of the Townsend, Theo, Caesar. It was uh, just people from all walks of life came to participate that, to participate in this because they wanted to be a part of something that's addressing what's happening today. And I uh, and I was putting it together and I had to form a story out of it. That. that was the most difficult part of the situation is that I had to form a, a I had to get a narrative and a story from all these well, you know, uh, well told, very colorful stories that everyone said after they said, because I didn't stop anyone. Everyone, everyone had to, when they got done, it's when they finished. Some people's sections are 10 minutes. Some people's sections are 10 seconds. So I had to form and edit and create a through line and tell the story and get across what I wanted to get. That was the artistry in it that I had to pull together for that element of it. So it was, it was, I was very impressed and, and, and amazed by everyone who came in and, 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 and said what they had to say because it was because I can tell that everyone was speaking from a true place. And you know what's great about it as well is that you have African American males, uh-huh. females, you have children mm-hmm. as well, all yeah. part, uh, participating in this. And uh-huh. um, I think that you did such a great job. First of all, once again, the photography was amazing. You shot those black folks very well, which I, that's my oh, big thing, right? Let me that's tell you something. We're going to look good when it comes to me. I'm you know, No if and buts about it. It will be some excellence yeah. somewhere. You make black happen. folks look great. Yeah. Because that don't always happen. <laughs> you know, like, it don't always happen. You know, the uh, they don't, uh-huh. they, you know how they say you lose, uh, what do you, you gain 20 pounds on on uh, with the camera, but <laughs> for us black folks, uh, they take down your good lookiness as well. <laughs> the camera, oh, too. oh, let me tell you something. Let me tell you who helped me out a lot. So, I had two people who were there for me throughout this process. It was my brother Ishmael, he um helped you know, the setup, the setup was crazy because I had to do if you don't, it looks good to you because I mean, not to you, but I'm talking about people who are in the audience, you see it as. Oh man, this looks great. But you, the behind that, the setup and everything, the lights and how we got to use this to cut this and get this effect and all this is, I got to give it out to my brother Ishmael. He was amazing in helping me make that happen. He he was there for me, whatever I needed and helping me set up and everything. So that brother was there and made it happen. And then also a brother by, that goes by the name of Miles Maker. That brother uh, really captured the essence of what we had going on um he he did all the behind the scenes stills for it if you guys saw any of the stills that we did um he took some major amazing photos that is also part of this because again hashtag the humanity in us is all is a visual art installation so what you guys saw was just the first part of it what you got what you guys see is the first part of it and then what i'm doing is also breaking down Certain elements, certain stories. I'm, I'm choosing like five stories that I'm going to tell us and tell in their entirety, and then after that, and also there's an element that is a uh, visual element just of stills. And and Miles Maker is the brother who's behind the stills that he took. He took some amazing stills that we're going to exhibit all this in one place when we get in at a gallery and a museum or uh, or a museum more of you know, a gallery. I mean, I ain't, you know, I ain't popping my collar like that, yeah. <laughs> but. Uh, it will. He's gonna. He's gonna. We're gonna. We're in talks with a couple museums and also uh, a perform another uh, to be in conjunction with another performance art piece that's going to, um, you know, show you the full scope of hashtag the humanity in us. Again, like this. This was just the first stage of it, which the the collage of and the storytelling of what we what we put out. But yeah, those two brothers, Ishmael and Miles Maker, was there for me and helped and helped. Uh, make my vision a reality and i appreciate those brothers um greatly thank you oh yeah yeah it was a- i hope i answered you know question. also too, uh, another thing that i, I huh yeah another, another thing that I, I another thing that i appreciate about it is that it um it a lot of times when these things happen in the world there's not really a platform for us to exhale and say what we feel about these uh, situations, right? I mean, you can go on message boards yeah. maybe or rant on your Facebook live or something like that, but there's not a lot of these kind of forums uh, for us to just say how we feel, 
about these uh -huh. situations. And what I love about your piece is, even though you may, the, the, uh -huh. the viewer may not be one of the people on the video, but it does give you this opportunity to exhale with them. Like you feel like they're speaking uh -huh. for you as well, which is very beautiful about the piece because it, it feels like they're saying what you feel, wow. if that makes sense. You know what I mean? And um, I, I really think that, uh, you know, you did such a great yeah. job of doing that because, uh, you know, when you when you see these things that happen over and over, you feel helpless for one. You know, you want to want to figure out a way to to do something to mm -hmm. to help your community and to, you know, and all of that. And um, one thing that this is, is uh, this this gives you a voice when you don't feel like, you, you know, you mm -hmm. have one. So I, I want to definitely give you props for the, for that and um, th that you, you know, you saw yeah. to do it. Uh -huh. Yes. So. Um, so. Thank you, Brian. Thank you very much, brother. Um, that was that was I was really happy about that, that I was able that people like it was a diversity of opinions and diversity of thoughts and the diversity because the more diverse, the more you're going to connect with the audience. That's how I look at things like the more diverse you are in opinions that you're that you're putting out there. That means you're going to connect with a certain with a certain uh, element or a certain population because a certain population is going to think like this and a certain population is going to think like that and a certain population is going to, you know, so that so I try to I try to exhibit something that should and hopefully uh, I attempted to connect with every person that's, um, you know, every person has a, a point of view that I hope hopefully an audience member can connect. With this person, or oh, I'll be, oh, you know, they're watching and be like, you know what, I'll be like this person, or I'll be like this person, or I'll be like this person, or you know, anything like that. So, that thank you very much for even you know, recognizing. I really appreciate that because that wasn't the tent, and uh, I'm happy that you saw, yeah, I, you know, I, thank you personally, um, especially like the touch of the American flag because it, it kind of can you hear me right sorry, now? Kiana, it's kind of breaking up. Yeah, you, you gotta. I'm sorry. Go say it back in. a little bit. Yeah. Am I good right uh -huh. now? Okay. Uh, I I was saying that I really oh, like the touch no, of good, good. the American flag. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Great. Great. Um, because uh -huh. when 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 you yes, speak you about this topic, it it really brings us back uh -huh. to America. And I mean, I want to know a little bit more about um. Uh, uh -huh. what, did did you choose did you choose that that backdrop because you could have chose any any type of background but to bring that together um can you speak a little bit about that yeah uh-huh speaking of that uh speaking about the you know the, the choice to use the mm -hmm. american flag mm -hmm. as a backdrop is what you're saying right i want to make sure i got it right i'm sorry if you can't hear me got it. yeah um i chose the american flag i can hear you i can I, I can get it i can get it um i chose the american flag uh because right wrong indifferent no matter what your point of view is about this whole situation we live in america that's just what it is if you're a pro-America, if you're like, oh my God, America hasn't done this for us or whatever the situation is, you're still here. Everyone that was here and that everyone that participated in this project is in America. <laughs> you know, so we had to, and, and and this is the things that we have to you know deal with. And I come from a personal view that, hey, my ancestors um were forced to do, you know, all the, you know, we were we were forced to be in, to be ingrained and in, 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 into interwoven into the fabric of American society. So this is what this is our mess. No matter what the situation, this is us. We are America, and America is us. We are you know we are African American. You know, with all of us, all of, all of us are from and our lineage from Africa. But we are we are in America, so we have to do something to speak about the injustices in America, and we need to learn a way or figure out a way how to maneuver and coexist in America. And um, and that was one of the elements that I'm like, okay, you know what? Because I was really decided if I was going to have like the, the complete white, you know, you remember the Apple commercials when it was the, the blown out white and, and you're piercing through 
the, uh, you, you're, 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 I was going to even have that, but then I, then I had myself, I said, okay, every, how I am as an artist, every frame should be saying something. There's no throwaway frames, especially when it comes to a visual element or something. Every move, every intention, everything should have an intention behind it and everything should have a reason, you know, a reason or a story behind why you do it. So when I got to the flag, I told myself, I want to have it to show that we are Americans. We are American. We pay taxes in America. Even if you just buy something from the store, you pay an extra three cent. These are the taxes that you're paying towards the American, the American uh, economy to keep it going. So we need to be represented properly in America uh, and need to be spoke about in America. Mm -hmm. And this is an American situation. It's not just an African-American situation. It is an American situation. If there's any demographic of people who are being unjustly and, and disproportionately murdered by the police, that needs to be addressed. I don't care if it's our brothers, our uh, Hasidic, uh, Hasidic Jewish brothers, our Islamic brothers, if it was our Hindu brothers, whatever the situation, if you are in America and there is a population that's been um, targeted and murdered at a alarming rate, that should be adjusted from the top of the food chain all the way to the bottom of the food chain to speak about why this particular demographic of people are being unjust, unjustly harassed or, or, um, or, you know, being unjustly harassed or, you know, murdered by the police. And that just needs to be, it's a, it's a human thing. And, but we're humans in America. So we just need, I needed America to be represented there. We got our, we, we're here. We're not going anywhere. This is us. So we need to fix this. We need to address this situation as human beings, not just African-Americans. This is it's not just affecting us, which is horrible. It's affecting everyone. I have I have counterparts who are white friends who are they, they, they're feeling this, too. They don't want to have to. You know, no one has like it's it, there is a demographic of just Caucasian people who are like, yo, this is ridiculous. And I'm tired of even having to deal with this. And I'm saying I'd say to them. Just imagine how right, right. you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So that's that's that was the choice behind using the American flag. I wanted to like, no, yo, we are here, and you know, let's let's get this situation worked out because this it needs to get worked out. You know, so that's thank, that's the reason why. Kim. You, thank nice you. Nice name, so by the way, too. <laughs> You're welcome. You know, anytime you know, um, you mix your profession, the thing that you were born to do. Um, with a cause that means so much, you're combining, um, you know, especially to who you are as a person, right? Um, you're combining yeah. two things that are mean so much to you. So what was your emotions like? As I know you, you know, you're a filmmaker, you know, uh, this is stuff that this is what you do. But as yeah. you, you are a human being, because we're on this, you know, we're all human beings. Um, as a human yeah. being, what was your emotions like doing this? Because it, it had to be emotional, right? It was very emotional, man. Uh, I was, uh, yeah, it's a real good question, Kente. It was a really um, emotional situation doing it because, first off, I, I, I had, um, I had, uh, you know, I had help. You know, when it, the day of, I had how many people I have? Like 35, 36 people. You know, man, um, that was coming in and out of of my office where, you know, we had it all staged and everything. And, you know, we had, I had people who were here, you know, help facilitate the situation like, like uh, Adrian and uh, Risha and Tommy Townsend and um, who people were helping me out throughout the day coordinated, but I was in, I was myself mostly in the room and Miles Maker would be there taking the steals. And then it, at one point, the brother just hopped on handling the boom for me, which I appreciate. Um, and and Carl Seaton and guys like that. But um, I'm in there. My I'm there for every single testimonial. Or and it was it, some of the stuff was was really affecting me. Because people came with approaches and had conversations that I didn't fathom, which was the purpose of doing it because I didn't think about it, you know. But because uh, I wanted to get a mixed and diverse, you know, uh, view and opinions. But yeah, it was, it was, it took a really emotional toll on me, man. It took a really emotional toll dealing with this because it was all pain. People, we started off from pain. Mm -hmm. If I should die by the hands of the police, it's a declarative painful statement. So going, so anything after that would spawn from that. 
and it, 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 it took a toll, man. I'm happy. I appreciate uh, people, Catherine, people like Randall, who said some funny things. You know, he's like, I'm a nice looking guy. Yeah. You know, yeah. those type of things. He said a lot more funny things. Uh, he said a lot more funny things. A, a lot, uh, and, but I had to, you know, I couldn't, I didn't have the time and space to put it all in. But yeah, it was, that really helped me out because everything that I was, everything that I was uh, dealing with was, was heavy, man. And it took a toll on me. And I had to take a couple of days to just, you know, just really, you know, just let that just get out of my system to the to that degree because it was it was an undertaking that I that I that I took on. Uh, I knew it was going to be something similar to that way, but it was it was it was emotionally draining, physically draining. Because if you if you coordinate like thirty some people and you got to get them in, they got schedules and everybody coming in. I had some people that uh, like you know like Thomas that uh, Thomas that brother you know had. Or di- he had auditions to go to. He had just he had meetings and all that. And then I had you know people like Milana, who's on a show right now, who's on uh, Aquarius right now. You know, I had you know uh, this on in what what's, what Aquarius is on NBC, CBS, one of those networks. Hope you get out of here with that. But it's on um, you know uh, all in in and not in in Kalila Kalila. I mean just just the name of. A few people. These are people. These are professional people who are working. Who's who's decided to sacrifice their time to something that they believe in. And I had to. But I know I want to be respectful of their schedules as well. You know. So that was. So that was an element. So that element on top of the emotional element, on top of the mm-hmm. physical element of me not sleeping for the, for three days, making sure that this come off the way I wanted to put it, and, and, and the element that it. You know. It. It. it you know. Uh, it added to me and my lady, you know, that that's, that's an element as well that you got to deal with, you know, all that, man. You know, I just had to, so, uh, had to deal which, with it. But for the people. Which one, uh, <laughs> which right. one of them really resonated with you the thank, most? Thank you, is it? The little boy. Uh, it was a little boy named Miles. Uh, he was the second to the last one. He's the one kind of like he said you should because what you what you guys have is not everything he said, and um, that resonated more because it was such a pure. Uh, it, he was he was just pure. It was like you know how as as adults uh, we could take things into context and then we weigh the pros and the cons and we go and we when you're when it's children speaking, it's a pure element from a point of view that's untainted and that's you know that's how you want to look at things out of a child's eyes sometimes and um he he the one who kind of choked me up because he said uh yeah they shouldn't be doing that and it was just just something as simple as that something as simple as that just had me like you know you know how brothers get sometimes you're like yeah man i'm just looking up at the sky <laughs> looking up you know just looking up and you know and, you know trying to <laughs> right. <laughs> so you know it's, it's, it's those things that be kind of after that young man went luckily he went early for me because I appreciate thank you for saying his uh his pops brought him in man his pops brought him in and wanted him to be a part of this he brought his son in and was like yeah I want him to be a part of this and um and I appreciate that uh, uh brother Michael Payne his son Miles Payne it came in and just he's like I want my boy to be a part of this and he was he the, the young boy and 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 also the, the young brother who was a teenager, um and he you know he was he he was really you know like I did everything I when he said I did everything I was supposed to do to make it home. That right there was another statement that kind of mm. resonated with me because it it looks it's like for example you know back in the day when you hear you know a guy got murdered by the police got shot by the police drug dealer or 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 he was still in you know you kind of can be like you know you're in a game that's what happens we just it's part of the game if you want to play it but when you, you at this point what's happening now civilians are being murdered right right people. it's not you know guys are that brother Falana, he was a he was a, a nutritionist for children he was a role model you doing like what? So if you're in the game or you out of the game, it's still open season, man. And that's not that's not good. That's not good. When you when it's to that degree, when it's to that degree, when you it doesn't matter 
if you're good, bad, or indifferent, we're going to try to exterminate you to a no, no. That's that's when that's 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 when you know that's when there's a change coming. And I feel there is a change coming, and artists need to do their part as well in this something that's going to you know enact or engage a change to happen. Yes, definitely, definitely well said, man. Uh, I, I can really appreciate um, you know everything that you're doing with this, and um, it's definitely needed. And I'm going to encourage uh, all those who are listening, whether you're listening live and you're in the uh, you know listen to the podcast audio or you're watching the video on Fire Talk. I put in the show notes as well as in the live chat uh, a link to the video, and of course you can. Um, Put uh, um, Damian D. Smith hashtag uh, humanity in us uh, in the Google search and find it as well. But I want you guys to go to there, watch the video, uh, watch it, and make sure you leave a comment and give a thumbs up. As well. Yes, because comments, my, comments are currency, and so and and to let the filmmakers know what you felt about it, because a lot of times, and I'm guilty of this. We'll see something, we really like it, we think it's great, and we'll click it off, and then we'll be thinking to ourselves, that was really good, but, you know, tell the filmmaker, you know, let them know, you know? Let the artists know, man, let the artists know, man. Artists know. And don't just say very good. You know, like, <laughs> you know, really let someone know how it made you feel, you know? So, uh, uh -huh. you know, so, so, so watch, if you've seen the video already, go back to the link and leave a comment and let the filmmaker and all the participants know how you felt about it and make sure you share it, share it in social media. You know, we share the memes about uh, whatever crap that's going on. Let's share this as well. So, um, mm. you know, let's share, but it's in the show notes and, and as well, you can search it as well. So um, now before we, before we, uh, we leave, and I'm going to say that again, before we, uh, uh, get out of here. Uh, I want to oh, okay. do a quick uh, sure. chat room shout out. Uh, we have uh, Lashonda in the chat room, uh, better known as Elshon. Uh, Miles Maker, who, yeah, Elshon. <laughs> Miles Maker, who's part of the uh, the production crew. Uh, we have Dr. Vibe. Hey, Dr. Oh, Vibe. Uh, of course, we have Lee. Hey, Dr. Vibe. Uh, we have Adrian. Adrian. Uh, Adrian. Adrian. My bad. Do not say her name wrong. It'd be a problem. Oh, oh, my so. bad, my bad. <laughs> I'm just about to lie. Uh, <laughs> we have Artis, we have Ryan, and we have Kelly as well. And uh, all the people that are listening as well on um, the podcast and the video, thank you so much. And those who will catch this on the download as well. So before we let you go, yeah, sure. the last time you were on our okay, okay. program, uh, you talked about a documentary. Uh, what's the status of that? Oh man, oh man. Um, a documentary is called uh, Target St. Louis. This next story is so unbelievable, we didn't think it could possibly be true. There was the dispersing of radioactivity in the air over cities at schools. It's like, wait a minute. Who's to say it stopped five blocks from here? 100,000 people are better were used as guinea pigs. The federal government knew about it and some of the other major corporations knew about it. Human rights can be subverted at any turn. We have wrapped principal photography on Target St. Louis. Um, again, Target St. Louis focuses on um, post-World War II, dur during the Cold War era, the military conducted secret chemical testing on poor, uh, low-income people, uh, predominantly people of color, um, chemical testing on them uh, without their knowledge. Um, the only thing that's, it's only thing that's a, a source of contention between uh, the government and the people is that it's a fact that they did the testing without their knowledge. But it's all now what they're what they're what they're saying is that oh we didn't use these chemicals that some people are saying that you used. So um, and again his his was why it happened around the same time that the Tuskegee experiment was happening, um, and it, is, it was it was actually concurrently being conducted by the Department of Health. Which is crazy, um, but it, but this this particular uh, testing was from and was initiated by the military, 
Uh, so it, well, we are now we're at, we're at, again, we wrap principal photography. We may have some special spinoff interviews that we're going to get. Like we're kind of waiting on Cornell West's people to get back with us for that one. Cause that's, I think him and, um, I think it was Tavis Smiley who was, who we were kind of waiting on. We waiting on Cornell get to get done doing his thing with Bernie and then Tavis, he's on his book tour. So uh, we were kind of waiting to hear back from them. Hopefully they were gonna, you know, add, add lend their opinions to it. But if not, you know, nothing stops the show and we're gonna finish it up. Um, so we're again, like I said, we wrap principal photography for it. Where um, myself, I'm directing it myself and Sean G. Slater is a co-director as well out of New York. Um, we're now, we're applying for grants. Hopefully we can get someone to help underwrite some of this stuff because we've been paying for everything out of our pockets you know, flights, hotels, rental cars, equipment, all that stuff kind of adds up. So we're kind of, hopefully we will we, we apply for all these different type of grants and um, different type of funding. Um, we get something to help underwrite something, but uh, help, help underwrite some of this. But if not, you know, we just do what we do as artists and we're going to you know, get it edited and, you know, put it out, out, put it out our own way. But by the end of I we're looking at like at the end of September, if we haven't received any of the grants that we we apply for or anything like that, we're just going to move forward and make it happen. We're just going to make it happen because, you know, it just needs to happen. Oh, uh, someone said, Damien, you should get Mike Weir Dyson. Yes, I did reach out to Mike Weir Dyson. Uh, uh, K Workplace, uh, Workplace. Hopefully, I'm saying it correctly. I did like I did reach out to Mike Weir Dyson, and I would love to have Mike Weir Dyson um, as a, as as a person to uh, interview because. Um, I think he's one of these uh, one of our intellectuals that I would love to get his opinion on what happened. But it's it's this story is so massive, man. If you once once it comes out, you guys are going to see um, <laughs> you're going to see what what they were doing, and it, it, it kind of shows you you know how your granddaddy never your granddaddy never liked to go to the doctor. Yeah, right. You know, it kind of gives you a reason why your granddaddy never liked to go to the doctor. Yes. Yeah, African, and, and some people don't understand it, or don't even, or have, don't, or, or do not have any knowledge of it. That, you know, older black men refuse to go to the hospital. Like my grandfather died of cancer, um, which he did. He was a sharecropper, and he worked on a tobacco farm as well. Uh, he had been smoking since he was eleven, so that was the main part of it. But one of the reasons that we weren't able to uh, get him to get any help or try to get him to, you know, manage the cancer, chemo or whatever situation could have happened is because he refused to go to the doctor because older black men have a mis uh, 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 mistrust for doctors because of the Tuskegee experiments. Situations like what I'm talking about in Target St. Louis, where they mm -hmm. tested, they used white phosphorus, uh, cadmium and radiation on children, you know, um, and things like that. So it's it's just it's it's a sad situation uh, of what's happening. Um, but just just what it is. It's just what it is, you know. And Target St. Louis is exploring uh, what happened in St. Louis. What happened in and 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 or is calling is calling attention. You know, the military and the United States Board of Ethics on testing and, and human testing of of uh african american people you know and and of, of any people low of lower economical standards and it's yeah, it's too, because if you did this to a group of people who then procreated that oh, yeah. you know it's like it's still in the um, gene pool yeah listen it's a brother it's a brother uh one of our case in points a brother who's one of the subjects of the documentary a brother named tony perkins who who you know had to deal with a lot from that. I'm not going to speak about it now, but when you guys see, we the trailer is up of uh, one of the trailers that we have. We're about to release a new trailer for uh, Target St. Louis soon. But yeah, man, it it um it it yeah, man, it's 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 it's, it's hard. It's their children, different uh, their children, their children, children. Because you know the thing about radiation, it lies dormant from people from person, and it can pass it along, and that stuff can 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 cause problems 20 years after the initial, you know, the initial, um, uh, uh, um, interface yeah. with it, you know, it's just, it's just, it's just bad all the way around. Right. And then cadmium, cat, uh, cadmium, all type of things, man, it's, it's, it's a bad situation. So basically again, like it's called, it's the name of the documentary is Target St. Louis. Um, we're going to finish up. We're going to get to editing real soon and finish up our editing and we're going to shop it around. Hopefully we can get it to like some distribution major. Just, you I was know, thinking, Netflix, um, we, um, Hulu, something like that, that can get out to the TV. people. 
as much as possible. Wouldn't that be a good, do you connect them two together? Do you look uh, It's like a it's quality like a black, uh, Netflix. It's like a black Netflix. Uh, we had. Oh, we had okay. them on. All right. Well, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm opening. To, I'm opening to partnering with anyone. You know who, 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 whose goal is to get the message and the word out for people. You know, uh, I'm open for. I'm open for anything. Let's you know just, um, you know, hit me up and we can talk and see if it makes sense for everyone. All right. But the word is going out, and, and I will. This documentary will be coming. Will will be coming out, and Sean and myself are very proud in the work and the research and the things that we've done to make this happen to get it to this point. And we're going to get it to another level uh, real soon because this documentary I feel is impactful for us. And um, like I, I'm, I'm a filmmaker. I never thought about documentaries, you know, unless I was inspired. Like I'm from St. Louis, and my grandparents lived around that area. And was raised in that area, and, you know. And who knows what you know residual effects that may have had to anyone, or the, or or what it's still having right now. You know, so it's it's a sad state. You fact, know, to be honest with it you, is what it is. I enjoy documentaries way more about our history than I do, uh -huh. uh, you know, um, feature, you know, uh, films, right? Because you know, it's just documentaries tend to be, if, especially when they come from the right place, um, about the facts, uh -huh. and it's not dramatized. You know, yeah. uh, I'm talking about it depends yeah, on who's yeah. doing it, obviously. So, um, so I it seems like our history gets told better in documentaries than when they, you know, when when all of a sudden the Hollywood writers start getting a hold of our history, and then they want to yeah. stuff around and move things around and chip. And then they. You know, my, you know, you know what my favorite part of the situation that makes me laugh when I watch some of these uh, stories told about our history uh, is that they use a lens to tell. Right. You, you know, hey, let's do it from this point of view. This person don't even have to be real. Like, what was that? Uh, what was the movie about? Edie? Oh yeah, with James um, McAvoy. Uh the uh, Last King of Scotland. Yeah, they, Black King of Scotland. they just made up a white dude to show it to me. Like, okay, <laughs> in Africa, about Africans. How are we gonna do this? Let's make up a white, make up a white boy, right? <laughs> you know what? I, I, I was like, wow. I enjoyed the movie and the James McAvoy, talented brother. I had nothing against their brother. And then, hey, it's a job, brother. Hey, I'm, I'm an actor as well. Yeah, you're a good actor. Job. Oh, he but, shouldn't have been. <laughs> I was like, why, I was like, why did we have to tell this story through his lens, though? The story was so rich and colorful, it can be told. Like, why do we have to go through his lens? And I enjoyed Last King of Scotland, but there was always something that kind of had me like, it's always hmm. a little. Mm -hmm. I can see the word. Like, that they always do that with every time they tell our story, like Rosewood, for example. And um, you know, I mean, it's like a long history of them just doing that. That's why I don't get excited. Like when black folks get real excited, oh man, they're making a movie about. I, I didn't. Rosewood was the one that just killed it for me. So I don't get excited oh, when yeah? Hollywood makes because it's about John Voight's character. He's like the, the hero of yeah, the okay. movie, and yeah. you know. And he was basically he was basically like molesting this young yeah. girl in the movie, right? Yeah, yeah it's like. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you what what do you, I got a question for you guys? What do you guys think about uh, uh, Birth of a Nation? Are you, not, are you anticipating I, I that to come movies. out? You know what? Uh, I, don't I, watch am. TV. I am. I am. I'm like I'm I'm a little weird like that. I like I do no, like no. Um, no. watching documentaries, but oh. um, I'm more of a um, listening. Oh, okay. I like talk radio and reading. Uh -huh. oh, okay. Well, you know, Nat Turner, the Nat Turner story, you know, I never thought I'd see a a, a movie, you know, produced about it because, uh, you know, 12 Years a Slave, I can see why Hollywood may, would make that, right? But, uh, you know, yeah. Nat Turner is something different. So I'm, I'm interested yeah. to see, you know, how it comes out, you know, because, you know, he's one of our, you know, biggest heroes, you know. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, you yeah. know, so I'm, you know, I, I'm always got the side eye. Like I gotta see it first. I want to see it. I can't wait. I can't wait to see it. I'm definitely going to be there. I'm. If it's I'm going to buy two to three tickets. If it's on point, I'm a, you, know, you know, know. If it's not, then you know, you know, it's like it's like 
it's like uh, it's like uh, I don't know if you ever heard uh, um, um, Denzel talking about when he was announced that he was going to be playing Malcolm X and Spike Lee's Malcolm X, and he said he'd be in the barber shop, and they'd be like, "Don't mess it up." <laughs> you know, <laughs> he said he can't be that yeah. on the street. Like, like, don't you mess up, Malcom? Don't mess up, Malcom. You know, so, so yeah, they perfect. Yeah. Don't be messing up that turn now. Yeah, I'm, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really excited. I'm excited to see it. To see what I tell you though. Do. Also, I would love to see Marcus Garvey though. That that man, man, Marcus Garvey be a story for man. you, man. It's a, I mean, we have to, but not, the story but, is like it's yeah, like it, what he was able to accomplish, and you it, you know it's almost like a I mean it's totally true, but it's you know it's like a fable almost like you know especially yeah. if you think about now it's 2016 and I don't think no one could even come close to to being you know what he was so so yeah. his story would be amazing as well so I mean I got a long look. yeah Marcus go <laughs> yeah, I mean, but and and that's the point in which that we're you know kind of getting our, our frustration with Hollywood. There's a long list of stories that can come out, so we don't need. Okay, we got the slave movies. Every you know, okay, now Octavia Octavia Butler has a plethora of stories. If you want to go sci-fi, like I'm an Octavia yeah, Butler a- fan, man. Like her that Wild Seed um, uh, anthology that she has. I think it's well, I think it's Wild Seed, Mind of My Mind, The Pattern Master, uh, Clay's Ark, and I was the fifth book in this series. Phenomenal Amazing. stories. Phenomenal. I would love to see one of them, one of them told. Why is there no listen? You want to talk about story? There's why is there no story about a woman who was convicted of of murdering a state troopers, sent to maximum security prison, breaks out, <laughs> and now lives. And you, that's a story within itself, yeah. man. That's that, that, you know, just so. I mean, it's a it's a plethora of stories. It's a plethora of of our story that could be out there and told. Um, we just need to start mm-hmm. just saying, uh, you know, this, the the Hollywood structure, which is a still is a real structure, in which it still has its powers, which I yeah, I appreciate because I I enjoy a lot of stuff that come out of the Hollywood structure as well. I can't act like I don't watch them. I do, and I enjoy them. But there also needs to be a. They need to. We need to diversify um, how they, you know, how our stories are put out, different how our stories are being told, and, our, and different stories that's been you know, cooks in the now. kitchen. Different cooks <laughs> you know, in the kitchen as well. We, we got the same yeah. guy who only knows how to do like spaghetti. <laughs> you know, we need uh, someone to uh, you know do, do some uh, fried rice at least. It's all about the spices, guys. It's all about the spices. Rice, you know, it's like that. You know, we, we, need, we need all about the seasoning, exactly. So we need, we just need to diversify everything. You know, uh, just, just let's let it. Let's every everybody needs to be represented. Yeah. Let's just I, not I, make I, it this type. I, I mean, I switch you. I, you know, like at this point, I'm tired of the super white guy. You know, like every movie is about like super white guy. You know, it's like you know, I, I you know, show me a super Asian good dude. Just do something different. It's the same. A super Asian. I like to see a super Asian. Like, I'm Asian. thing, but the super white guy. <laughs> you know, it's like, geez. Good you know? super Asian brother like doing this. The thing. super white guy who saves the day, and you know, and I would like, I would like to see a magical, a uh, Hasidic Jew brother making it, ha- making it happen. A Hasidic Jewish brother making it happen. I would like to see. I would, I would like to see. You know, our one of our brothers from my, you know, Imhotep. I would like to hear. Emo, I would love to hear the emo, the yeah, the the Imhotep story because that brother Hotel, Hotel, you know, is a is a greeting that we use, but it's from the origins of it. This guy was amazing. He's, Surgeon is an amazing guy. Let's see. Let's talk about Hotel. You know, it's a whole bunch. It's like I said. It's a it's a array of stories is out there. We just want we just want you know stories being told from a from a true point well, of view. Now, it, how about this? This is something radical. How about a story that just has black people and they're just being normal? <laughs> you know, they're just normal. You know, wow. they're just being they're, they're that, like, that, that white they're they're not normal black normal black people can be groundbreaking. Right. <laughs> like, you know, we're not stereotypes. We like, you know, different yeah. kind of stuff. I mean, I love that. What movie what you, you can you name a movie that you feel like just a normal black life? Uh, you know, Love Jones was a very good movie. 
Well, we all know love Jordan. Come on, we ain't got you know what? You might as well just bring up Jordan when we talk about basketball players. We all know those right. are great. Oh, you, you mean know? something like that? Uh, something like that. Yeah, some 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 before but some before ninety six. I mean after ninety six. After yeah. oh man, you I think that's when love. Love Jones. Black is you're doing a great job. Yeah. Yes, uh, yes, I agree. Black is you're doing. You a know what was job. a great show? Um, it was in a black show. I I enjoyed about last night. You no, know, uh, there was a show. Yeah, that was good about last night. Uh, um, there was a show called The Unit. The Unit had one of the coolest the black characters ever. Uh, it was a show with uh, oh. Dennis Haysbert, who had played the president on Twenty Four, and he played like the uh, you know he played like the leader of this unit. Um, on uh, it was on CBS. It lasted for four years. Great show. He was a bad oh, ass. He was a leader yeah. didn't take no mess. He was no sidekick. He was no flunky. You know what I'm saying? Uh, he had a great relationship with his black wife. They, they oh, were okay. loving towards each other, and you know they had you know it was a wonderful show. And um, you know, yeah, okay. I might have to get. I, I might have to get up on the unit. I wasn't. You know what? Also, was great. Um, what I enjoyed ab about the diversity mm -hmm. in it was Sense Eight. If you guys get oh, chance. I haven't seen it. that's on Netflix, right? Netflix, Netflix, Sense Eight, the Wachowski brothers. Uh, oh, no, the Wachowski did, uh, siblings. I'm sorry, you're correct. I'm sorry, no disrespect. The, 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 how about this? The Wachowskis <laughs> did um, did a uh, the Sense Sense Eight, and it just it just I think it's I think it's the next step of where we should be going in storytelling the progression that it was you know it was universal everyone was just living and trying to survive there was no i, I enjoyed that element and that world that they created in sense eight the wachowskis were amazing in that um in a way of doing that and, and every 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 element of that story um was was well developed fleshed out very, very well. And each character and each person performed amazingly, I believe. So like th things like that, that's that's the level of, you know, in inclusiveness that I want in the stories that I, when I'm able to direct and write something, that I want to include everyone as being who they are. Right. It's just, you are, it's a back, your, your ethnicity and your race or whatever is a backdrop to who you are. It's just a backdrop. It's something, oh, okay, this, it is my, it's not even a real factor. It's just, it's only a factor because we go into your community and see you interacting within your community, but it's not. He's not story. Larry the black guy. <laughs> yeah, it's not Larry the black guy. You know, you know, no, nah, man. I just like, you know, hey, there's a cable guy who just happens to be black. <laughs> right. You know, <laughs> and he's going through his wife who's too black. <laughs> you know, it's just, you know, those type of things, you know, that, you know, I just want that, that those real stories. That's just just reflect. You know, it's so easy. Just reflect the world. Right. That's all we ask. Just reflect what we see outside. That's it's just that simple. Yeah. It just reflect the diversity. That's yeah, that's all vision, we get. Dude, have vision because they always say they you know well they want to stay in the box because that's where where it's supposedly at. Like you know what you got to have vision. Like think outside of the box. Don't just do what everyone does don't just portray us the way that you know the the book is yeah. that we have to be think outside of that so you know I, so yeah that's... well you know anyone who knows me knows that's like one of my uh, I get on the, my high horse or my podium or my pedestal or whatever you want to call it and I always talk about that, that very issue because it's uh, you know it's definitely an issue that uh, is is ever always on my mind so um, but once again, I want to remind people that the film is the humanity in us hashtag <laughs> humanity in humanity us, in us. and uh, it's a terrific short film. Please, uh, I'm gonna put the put it back into the chat for those who who may not have missed it. Go to it. It's up. It's uh, about three and a half minutes, something. Three minutes. Yeah, three minutes and I think forty five seconds. Three minutes and forty. I'm sorry, what do you say? <laughs> yeah, well, it goes black and music plays. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> make, make sure that you guys go to it, watch it, leave a comment. Yes. Leave a comment because, you know, how's he going to know you liked it? I appreciate it. I'm at Walmart. 
Well, there's no more Walmart in LA, so you won't catch them there. But what I'm saying is leave the brother a comment and all the people that helped with it and then share it with your family, your friends, your enemies, whoever, and, and tell them to do the same. Um, and uh, so um, before we go, how can people get you in social media and um, anything else that we should be on the lookout for? Uh, sure, yeah. Uh uh, I start with the lookout for. Uh, I'm always auditioning, so look out for me something uh, soon. Also, um, um, I look out for Target St. Louis. You know, that's a documentary that coming out that I spoke about earlier, and also Stolen Time. It's a uh, as my first feature narrative film that I'm going to that I'm uh, going to direct, and I wrote it. I'm directing it. I'm directing it. I don't see myself acting. I'm, if I do act, if I do perform in it, it'll be a very small role. But um, the first, this is my first feature writer director role that I'm going to stolen time. It's um, you know about a about a guy about a young man who's wrongly convicted of a, a crime that he did not commit, uh, and how he had to get adjusted in prison, and then he's freed from the Freedom Project after a certain amount of time, and he has to re get himself reacclimated into life. It's a uh, you know it's, it's a story. It's it, but it doesn't take the the um the 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 route that you think he may take you know as you can take from my as you can see from my previous work i don't like to you know just leave it you know a b c d you know he's gonna jump and you know, do all type of stuff uh but yeah stolen time and uh so those are the projects that i'm focusing on right now for myself as a director writer um but uh you know auditioning and how you guys can get in contact with me it's it's very easy my Instagram is my name, Damien, D-A-M-I-E-N, D. Smith. My Facebook is Damien D. Smith, and my Twitter is Damien D. Smith. So you guys can follow me on all those platforms. And then also uh, on my Facebook, you guys can go to go and like the 4910 Rosalie Production. That's my production company. That's um, that'll keep your breast on all of our projects, uh, everything that's going on from about that, where it's screening that next. Uh, from Stolen Time and then also uh, Target St. Louis, what's happening on that. And then also each one of them have their own Facebook page. The Target St. Louis has its own Facebook page and About That has its own Facebook page that also is going to keep you abreast of everything that's happening uh, that got going on. So again, like I said, uh, for my Twitter, Damian D. Smith, Instagram, Damian D. Smith, and Facebook, Damian D. Smith. Did you guys can get in contact with me? 365. All right, all right. And Kiana, how can people get in touch with you and tell us about Happy well, Work Week you can once find again? Me across and what's your next Happy Work Week is? on all platforms? I broadcast on Periscope and Facebook Live Sunday through Wednesday at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, doing the Work Week Challenge, challenge uh, folks to get it together during the week. And um, yeah, I mean, you, I, I tell you, I told you about Happy Work Week. What it's all about. So, Kente, how can people find you in social media? Yeah, you can get me at Kente F. Uh, that's on Twitter. You can also go to IndieRadio.org. That's I-N-D-Y Radio.org. And you can find more information about the different podcasts that we, we have coming out. Uh, this Sunday night at 7 30 uh, Pacific, 10 30 Eastern, um, we'll be back covering the Fear of the Walking Dead show. So that is this Saturday. I mean, sorry, Sunday at uh, 7 30 Pacific, 10 30 Eastern. And then um, coming up in a couple of weeks uh, on May the 12th, uh, our show, Mars Venus, uh, Men and Women Talk to Mars Venus show, will be coming back. And um, so make sure you guys check that out. We're going to be talking, we have some great topics uh that we're going to be talking about this year we got to get damien as one of the panelists uh on uh, one of the shows uh, uh oh man i would love to do it brother yeah, relationship yeah. stuff uh yeah. so uh and also to uh the spotlight on thursdays as well uh definitely check that out uh, we're talking about gaming next week and then we're going to be breaking down for the next uh several weeks after that um the top 10 movies of different decades so we start 70s, Ooh. then it. Ooh, that's 80s. dope. That's dope. Yeah, so so I made my all my lists. So uh, I'm interested to see what everybody else's list is, and uh, you know, there's no wrong answers because it's what you like. 
but uh, you know, it'd be interesting to see what kind of movies that uh, people pick for their list. So we're gonna be breaking down the list. So that's on Spotlight, uh, and um, that's in two weeks when that those episodes begin. So uh, we have all that stuff going on. Uh, we want to once again thank you, Damien, for coming on. Your work is amazing, and um, can't wait for your next project, uh, Target St. Louis. Uh, that man, I, I'm. I'm going to be uh, every every so often, I'm going to be checking in, making sure, you know, I, I missed it coming out. So I want to definitely be, be on, on top of that when that when that comes out. I can't wait. Thank you, brother. But um, so uh, we'll, we'll catch you next week. Uh, our, our guest is uh, uh, Imuna Zamani. Uh, she'll be talking about her battles with the Florida, uh, uh, the state of Florida, their uh, judicial system and uh, the prison system there. Uh, she has a very interesting story to tell, and um, it should be very interesting uh, having that talk with her. So that is our show next week. You guys have a wonderful and safe weekend. God bless.